Hello, welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss the semiconductor lasers. We shall also discuss in detail the homojunction diode laser. The homojunction diode laser is a special type of semiconductor laser. A semiconductor laser is a specially fabricated PN junction diode. It is essentially a diode. The light emitting mechanism in an LED and the laser diode is same. There is a striking difference between the solid state lasers and the semiconductor lasers. The striking difference is the light production mechanism itself is different. The electronic transitions are responsible for the solid state and the gas lasers, while the recombination of the electrons with the holes is responsible for the emission process in the case of a semiconductor laser. The same mechanism is also responsible for the emission of light in the case of an LED. The semiconductor lasers are very popular because of their size and their efficiency. They are one of the most efficient lasers they will be about 0.1 millimeters in length and they have high efficiency close to 40 percent modulation of the light intensity can be done easily by modulating the applied bias to the laser diode that is one important factor that makes these lasers very useful in communication engineering now we shall look at the types of semiconductor laser diodes there are two different types of semiconductor laser diodes the first one is Homojunction semiconductor lasers and the second one is heterojunction semiconductor laser. In the case of a homojunction semiconductor diode, same material is used on either sides of the junction. Means on either sides of the junction will have the same material, but on one side will dope with an N type material and the other side will dope with the P type material. So the host material will remain same on either sides of the junction. And if from that junction we get the lasers, we call such a semiconductor laser diodes as homojunction semiconductor laser diode. The example is gallium arsenide. Similarly, the heterojunction semiconductor laser diodes, we use different semiconducting materials on the two sides of the junction. For example, gallium arsenide on one side and gallium aluminum arsenide on the other side. Gallium arsenide as well as the gallium aluminum arsenide, these materials are known as direct band gap semiconductors. Means in a recombination process, light is emitted. It's a recombination of holes with the electrons. This gives light in the case of direct band gap semiconductors. Whereas in the case of indirect band gap semiconductors, a recombination in indirect band gap semiconductors, the energy is released in the form of both heat and light. So we choose direct band gap semiconductors. The examples are gallium arsenide, gallium aluminum arsenide, and there are many such materials. The alloy semiconducting materials, most of them are direct band gap semiconductors. Now we shall look at the homojunction semiconductor laser. The schematic diagram of the homojunction semiconductor laser will look like this. Here, the lowermost layer is the metal contact. This is the metal contact. Over that, we have the n-type semiconductor. Over the n-type semiconductor, we have the p-type semiconductor followed by a metal contact. These metal contacts are there to apply biasing to the junction. And here, we have the junction. The junction in the case of a semiconductor laser diode is also referred to as active region. So in this active region, only the recombination takes place. As a result, you get the laser. These two parallel surfaces, they act as the optical resonators. These two surfaces are optically flat and parallel faces. They are generally cut along 100 plane. These two semiconducting materials are heavily doped semiconducting materials. A junction between heavily doped N-type and P-type semiconductors form the laser diode. In the case of a homojunction diode, we generally use gallium arsenide. So on one side, we have the gallium arsenide that is heavily doped with the N-type material such that that region works as an N-type semiconductor. And on the P side, it is heavily doped with a P-type material such that gallium arsenide works as a heavily doped P-type material. Two end faces are cut parallel to establish the optical resonator. And sides are rough end. The sides are roughened because we want to have the optical oscillations along only the length of the diode. Now we shall look at the working. The energy band diagram of the unbiased homojunction diode will look like this. 
Please note that the dashed line represents the Fermi energy level or for short Fermi level. The Fermi level on P side is in the valence band. On N type semiconductor side it is in the conduction band. Fermi energy level EF is passing through the valence band on P type side and uh, through the conduction band on N type side. Reason is both P and N are heavily doped. This kind of a scenario one can notice only under thermal equilibrium condition. At thermal equilibrium, the Fermi level is uniform across the junction. As we have seen a straight line extending from P type to N type materials or its value is uniform across the junction. Now we shall look at the pumping mechanism. When the junction is forward biased, both the electrons and holes are injected into the junction region in high concentrations. So we are talking about this scenario. When the junction is biased, both electrons and holes, they are injected in high concentration into the junction. So the D is the thickness of the junction. In other words, what we can say is the charge carriers are pumped by the DC voltage. When the diode current reaches a threshold value, beyond that if you try to bias the diode, then the carrier concentration in the junction region will rise to a very high value. Now we shall see how population inversion is achieved in the case of a semiconducting laser diode. Within the junction region or the active region thickness, we notice that this region contains a large concentration of electrons within the conduction band and simultaneously a large concentration of the holes within the valence band. Due to the applied DC voltage, the active region contains a large concentration of electrons within the conduction band and simultaneously a large number of holes within the valence band. Recollect that holes are nothing but the absence of electrons. Holes represent absence of electrons which means the higher energy levels in the narrow region are having a high electron population while the lower energy levels in the same region are vacant. And when you have a large concentration of the electrons in the conduction band or a high population of the electrons in the conduction band, then we have the lower energy levels in the same region that are vacant because they are the holes. The upper energy levels in the narrow region are having a high electron population while the lower energy levels in the same region are vacant which means the population of the electrons in the higher energy levels belonging to the conduction band is very very large when compared to the lower energy levels. The lower energy levels are largely empty and we have only the holes in the lower energy level thereby population inversion is achieved. Therefore population inversion is achieved in the narrow region and this narrow region is called as inversion region or active region. Now we shall see the lasing. A spontaneous photon is emitted due to the recombination of electron and hole pairs. A spontaneous recombination of electron and hole gives a photon which is also called a spontaneous photon. This spontaneous photon in the injection plane stimulates the conduction electrons to recombine with the holes in the valence band. The stimulated electron hole pair recombination produces the lasing. In the case of a homojunction diode developed using gallium arsenide, one can get wavelength of 900 nanometers that is in infrared region. If you use gallium arsenide as a homojunction material, then we get 900 nanometer wavelength which falls in the infrared region. There are certain drawbacks of the homojunction lasers. The first one is the active region is not well defined. Since on both sides of the junction we have the same material, the refractive index will remain same across the PN junction. As a result, light can diffuse into the surrounding medium.
The third drawback is high threshold currents are required and the laser cannot be operated continuously at room temperature. In this video we have started our discussion with the light production mechanism in the case of a semiconducting laser diode. We have said that there are two different types of semiconducting laser diodes. The first one is homojunction semiconductor lasers. The second one is heterojunction semiconducting laser diodes. We have seen the homojunction semiconductor laser diodes in this video. If you use same material on either sides of the junction, then you call such a junction as a homojunction and the laser diode that is developed using such a junction is called as a homojunction semiconductor laser diode. Generally, gallium arsenide is used in developing homojunction semiconducting laser diode. If different semiconducting materials are used on the two sides of the junction, then we call such a junction diode as heterojunction junction semiconductor laser diode. Generally gallium arsenide and gallium aluminum arsenide are used in heterojunction semiconducting laser diodes. We have seen the schematic diagram of the homojunction semiconducting laser diode. We have seen its structure, we have seen its working, we have seen the pumping mechanism. The pumping mechanism is electrical pumping. In this case it is the DC bias that is applied across the diode will act as the pumping for the diode. We have seen how the carrier concentration change with the applied bias. We have seen the mechanism using which the population inversion can occur in a laser diode. We have seen the lasing mechanism. We have also seen that if one uses gallium arsenide in the homojunction semiconducting laser diode, then it will emit at 900 nanometers, which falls in the infrared region. We have seen the drawbacks of the homojunction laser diode also. Thank you.